talking about Activision uh, because news has come out that uh, Activision was provided or a uh, a new IP was uh, brought to Activision it was pitched to Activision by the people um, from oh god it was the the Call of Duty World War Two guys right yeah um um Glenn Schofield yeah Glenn Schofield yeah so he pitched them a new IP and Activision said no yeah they said just just flat go. out no. Yeah, no, no, thank you. They said we got Call of Duty and Bungie's working on Destiny essentially, and you know we know how that's been working out. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bungie so, is is, is uh, bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Next, so, <laughs> this is back to our, our when we when we talked about Activision and and their their slowly sinking ship is mm -hmm. they are not willing to take chances on anything. I mean, they have one major game coming out this year, which is Call of Duty. They have the Crash Bandicoot. Uh, is it Crash Racing? That's yeah, Crash Team Racing uh, Remaster. Yeah, and th then they pub they're publishing uh, Sekiro, which is a developer that's not under them. It's an outside developer that they're just publishing the game for. Yeah, the, so, from software, the from uh, the, so the uh, Dark Souls guys. Yeah, so they they don't have anything in the pipe, and to say um, to tell, especially Glenn Schofield, who who was uh, like I think he was originally a Call of Duty guy, right? Um, yeah, he made the original Call of Duty. Like he was on a team behind, like the original Infinity Ward, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, but it. it no, uh oh. No, no, no. I'm sorry. He okay. he got. Uh, <laughs> he, they they started the Sledgehammer Studios. They didn't do Infinity. Yeah, Ward. yeah. And there yeah, was a Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer. Yeah, it wasn't. It was Sledgehammer because they did uh, the right. the most recent one that they did was the World War Two. Yeah. So I mean, it's 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 definitely a creative mind. Somebody that probably has something that was pretty interesting. And for them to say no, we're just going to stick with what we have when you don't have anything. Anything, it, you know, it's, it's just kind of it's, it's self defeating. Yeah, and I mean that just plays into the previous um, long form we had where they are okay with that. They're okay with mm -hmm. releasing one, two, three games in a physical year and just letting those games just like you know milk themselves um, rather than putting out you know quality content for a wide variety of uh players they right. want to they want to stick with this you know this group you know call of duty is going to play call of, call of duty players are going to play call of duty and now that we have microtransactions and loot boxes and all the sort we can you know milk that for as long as possible yeah. Yeah. for all that it's worth yeah and then and then exactly the slaughter you have <laughs> announcements like diablo immortal which nobody wants you know <laughs> you know activision is essentially taking a lot of ips that people enjoy and turning them to things that they don't want right and um you know it's it's going to be interesting exactly um you know how this uh, continues and and then another note uh with him pitching that ip to activision he cannot take that anywhere else now yeah yeah he they, they will he will have to get a per permission right from Activision. well yeah he'd have to they, get they, permission Right, I'm not depend. Yeah, depend on their contract. Right, they all they have first right of refusal. Refusal, but because he came up with it under the um, Activision umbrella, they could they could take him to do the same things any match did with um, with Oculus. Yeah, so, and Sue. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that maybe something that we never see. Exactly. Yeah, and and that, and that's unfortunate, especially if it was something that wasn't Call of Duty. I would yeah, I would exactly. uh, appreciate anything that isn't call of duty from the guys over there what i was saying is that um you know there's a ton of talent over right. at activision um you know mine is blizzard and you know most of them are just being relegated to making call of duty and that is very unfortunate yep i agree so let's go ahead and move on we got uh two more quick hits for you guys we're going to try and get through those quicker than we got through these this first one so uh moving over from activision we're going to talk about ea uh mm -hmm. because now they have opened up an esports studio and boogie explain to us exactly what the hell this is <laughs> um it's basically it's gonna be a place they're gonna be holding tournaments so they they have a play area the, the competitive area didn't have a waiting room for for um um competitors um okay. play, other players yeah so it, i mean it's, it's just them moving into the the esports and they're setting up their own thing their own sis, uh play their own space much like blizzard did when they brought the uh the studio i mean the uh the the um auditorium out in california mm -hmm. um so yeah they, they're just setting up a studio um their first event is going to be the madden 19 challenge um, the Madden NFL 19 Challenge, which is going to have a hundred hundred ninety thousand dollar prize pool that should be coming up soon. 
um and you know they they you know they have a couple other games that can be comp- in the competitive space when you look at battlefield 5 and the ultra popular um fast rising yeah. apex um yeah. legend right so yeah, definitely so and and then also don't forget you can't forget fifa so i mean yeah. you know just a place to hold their own tournaments instead of written it out and right. if it's going if it's going to be a huge um money maker for them it makes sense instead of having instead of having the overhead of trying to secure spaces and maybe not being able to secure spaces because there's other events you mm-hmm. just have your own place and that you yeah. know is going to be readily available yeah so it, it basically puts all of their um ips in in one like space you know this is where we hold ea um you know sponsored uh esports tournaments yep exactly. essentially so they so they um and then, you know what i haven't really heard or seen anything about you know like madden or uh nba live tournaments outside of like the the small things that ea does so uh-huh. so maybe i i mean i personally just haven't they, heard of it i don't know they have, espn um shows the madden challenge every year okay okay well yeah that's the yeah, it's, it, it usually starts. I want to say it starts. It's going to start soon at the end of spring. Okay, right, right around they. It seems like they they tied it. They tied in with the NFL draft. So okay. right around that time, they have that tournament. And they they show it on ESPN like it's a, it, like it's an NFL game. Wow. Okay. They, well, that, well, that's serious. that's good. That's good. Yeah. I I just didn't know how big the esports scene was for for Madden and FIFA and all the EA uh, properties. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now FIFA. this. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, FIFA and Madden have huge um, esports. Um, and they, they, their teams are based on the mutt and the the, um, the fuck team, the mm. ultimate team cards. That's why that's such a problem because people ah. have build their team. People people build their teams using the ultimate team cards. So they, you know, that that's where the problem comes in, right? Okay. So you, you got so to that, that makes players. Sense. <laughs> you got to pay money. You got to get the cards. You got to get. I mean, it's a lot of randomization. But all of the top players usually all have most or many of the same top players, um, yeah. top um, um, characters. So I, I think it, it levels out there. I mean, the last tournament I watched, uh, who was the it was, a, it was a stupid receiver who was just killing everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say it was DeAndre Hopkins. I don't remember exactly who it was, but everybody like all it was like that. Six of the top eight t- players had that receiver. It was Damn. just chucking freaking bombs up, and they couldn't. Oh, Gronkowski was was, it, I think, and nobody could stop him. It was stupid. It's the meta, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so so look out for that. Uh, we have one more quick hit, and this is the one that actually interested me uh, because Sega uh, has pulled um, their new game. Well, okay, so first off, th- there's a game um, in the Yakuza series. It's getting a spinoff. It's called Judgment, and there's a voice actor named Pierre Taki that uh, voices one of the main um, characters uh, that's going to be within that story. Yeah, and his likeness is in the game as and, well. Yeah, his, his likeness and everything. Yeah, the character looks exactly like him. Uh, so um, Sega has pulled this game from Japanese store shelves. I think it's out in Japan. It's, uh, we're actually waiting for the Western release. Mm-hmm. Um, so they pulled it from the shelves because the voice actor himself was arrested on drug charges. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing to know is that he did a voice in Kingdom Hearts 3 for Olaf, the, the little right. snowman from, from Frozen. He yeah, did his Jap- voice. Yeah, the yeah, Japanese the- version. Yep. He did that voice too. And so Square Enix will be removing that voice actor's lines from the, from the Japanese version of the game yeah. in an update that's going to be coming soon. And the, the thing, the thing is, um, and a lot of people, are maybe um, especially our American listeners, are like, "Yeah, so he did drugs, so what?" But mm-hmm. in in Japan, it is a much more serious offense yeah. to be a drug user. I mean, he's facing up to seven years in prison for getting caught using cocaine, um, which is the drug they they said they caught him using, and they mm-hmm. tested him, and he tested positive. So you know, he's. You know, he's out of it. He's, he's essentially canceled in Japan. Like he, right. he's he's yeah. done. It's 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 more on a like you you're dishonorable type thing. You know exactly. Yeah, they, they take the tra- traditional like uh, approach to it. It's like you're yep. a drug user. Like this is unacceptable. And uh, he, he's he's been essentially canceled in Japan. They're they're removing his likeness and uh, voice work from from game from re- from current games. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure how much work he's done in the past and if that's going to be um altered or or whatever in any kind of way yeah. but uh for for this game for judgment 
which is a, a, a fairly new game and uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 um, he, he his, he's going to be completely removed from, from yep. those games deleted deleted cancelled is what I like to call it <laughs> and it's it's it's, uh, it's definitely it's it's, it's I, like like you said, I found it super interesting. Um, just just because they, you know, their their zero tolerance is yeah. it's just, you know, it's done, and that that's that's the cult, that's their culture, especially when it, when it comes to any kind of drug offensives, drug offensive sales and use. They mm-hmm. they go hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, I mean, and it's un it's unfortunate because like now these uh, studios are gonna have to go back and actually like do more work in order to you know remove his likeness from those games. Uh, I mean, I, I I can see a lot less work for Kingdom Hearts three because uh, they, all they're doing is removing the voice actor. I'm not sure how what they're gonna replace it with, but I mean, if you've played Kingdom Hearts three, and I'm not trying to spoil anything, uh, Olaf doesn't necessarily need a voice. He doesn't yeah. do he doesn't do anything in the game. So <laughs> removing <laughs> removing his voice from Olaf in Kingdom Hearts 3's uh, Japanese version doesn't seem all that detrimental. Um, right. It's it's a judgment that is probably going to see a lot more development time um, put into it mm-hmm. uh, because they have to re- they they essentially have to redo character. this character. Yeah, all his lines need to be re- 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 recorded and his. Uh, his his in, in-game character needs to be replaced yeah yeah so that's going to take a lot more time effort and uh, mm-hmm. most importantly money <laughs> and uh you know and and in this day and age it's something that that can actually happen you know i i, I remember uh the first time that i actually remember something like this happening was in destiny one where they replaced oh, uh the yeah they yeah. they they replaced the little was it ghost thing? I think. I don't yeah, know. the ghost. Yeah, they replaced the. It was Peter Dinklage. Mm-hmm. Uh, he didn't want to do any of the uh, DLC follow up. I don't know if it's schedule conflict or is the the stories out there is either it was a scheduling conflict or he wanted more money. It was one of the two. But um, they replaced him with Nolan North, and they yeah. went and retroactively re-recorded all his lines from the original game all the way through. Yeah, yeah, and that was the first instance of something like this uh, that I can recall. And uh, it looks like, you know, if, if you mess up, you know, and you have any work in modern games, you will have your essentially your legacy erased. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. You're you're gone. You're not there anymore. Yeah. And that's uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty crazy when you when you think about uh, games and how, you know, if you were on a cartridge, you're there forever. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now nowadays they can just delete you. Yeah, they can just delete you. Yeah. Just buy so. an update. Patch it out. Patch them on out there. Eh? <laughs>